generate are actually through Scout and Mako. They're the two players in the early game that are very active on Absolutely. the map. In saying that, I thought K actually performed above standard for this mad team lineup. Giving him a pick like Thresh means that the team is also agreeing and looking to see if he can be a playmaking threat. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, supports generally run the lane in the early game in bot side. So if you can have a big performance on a playmaker like Thresh, you can eliminate skill difference by getting an item difference, right? You know, you don't expect Breeze to team fight as well as iBoy, but if K can donate Breeze a couple kills in the early game, hey. And if he can be on a champion like Ezreal, something they like to actually play into the Kaiser, then even though you might be equal on items, you come online just a little bit sooner because of the gold value of things that you're trying to pick up. So certainly multiple ways for them to attack this early He's game. He's happily pushed, it seems, to the Ezreal on this time. Very silver ban there. Haro could be picking up the Nocturne as he is in for clear love this game. But it might just be that, or as they would have a jungler mid lane. What do they want? What do they want to leave Scout with that last pick for? And they do not. They give him the Galio on the first pick, second phase. I actually really like the Galio pick here. And you know, you already see what the mid laner is. And this way, instead of picking one of those other roles, this still can be Gragas jungle or support, still can be Shen top or support. Well, what do you pick here for Mad Team? You don't necessarily know what all the matchups are going to be. I think this has been a really intelligent draft from EDG and a, and a good display of flex picks. I think it's going to be Ezreal or Olaf. Uh, this is how they like to play when they play in the LMS. They like to have an up-tempo jungler as well as a safe uh, AD carry. I got to say, I am not really a fan of, of a full physical team against <laughs> Gragas, Galio, Shen uh, with another pick to go. That is feeling like you must slam the game early or you just auto lose almost. It's going to be really, really tough. The efficiency of tabbies, of things like Sonya's, even if they want to wow. go tanky AP, is going to be incredibly, incredibly high. Uh, we'll see where EDG does decide to go. I think an early game jungle could make a lot of sense because you just have to match the pressure that's going to come out of Mad Team. If you can actually stop them from getting ahead, uh, they are essentially losing. They really do need that's a snowball this game, it feels like. Taking it to heart. Play your champions, play you the way you want. Yep. Matter the results. All right, I guess no matter the situation, you put yourself in for the results. Here it is going to be that physical team you were talking about as Olaf gets locked in for Haro. A lot of that early game aggression coming out of the Viking for him. And I want to precurse this with, I agree with exactly what Azale said, that this is now a comp that is on a clock. However, mm -hmm. this is a team that very often puts themselves on a <laughs> clock and they were able to execute <laughs> against J team. Yeah. They fell down against the Flash Wolf. So if you hold EDG to a similar standard, you would think this is now going to be a difficult game to play. They do struggle to close against good teams, but I do expect them with this bottom side of the map, especially to be able to generate the leads that we are looking for. Yeah, I think a lot of the game then becomes about Haro. You want to track Kong Yue. You want to make sure he can not create advantages in those lanes. If you keep isolated lanes, if your laners play safe, when you're hitting that one, two item mark and nothing has happened, EDG is looking very, very good. So we'll see. Can Mad make those individual outplays? Can Kong Yue get his lanes ahead? Can K be that playmaker, that difference maker that they're going to need? Because someone has to step up very early on. It could be Kong Yue in the jungle, that all-pro team jungle from the LMS. Most improved player as well coming out of that region. So the guy can make sparks. Can the team follow up on that? We'll have to see. They're up against Edward Gaming. And that bot lane should be an awesome matchup as well. We're almost about to be on the river for game two of the day. On, as I said before, another day of that elimination. We already see KT Rolster pushing themselves through. And Zale, you said if Mad Team can start to shake things up here, it could really make the group interesting. It really will make it crazy. And excited to see if they can pull it off. All right, we are on to the rift with Mad Team versus Edward Gaming, who will be able to come out with a win here. Like we said, Mad has to go fast, early, and keep the pace in their favor. And it is worth noting that it is a Predator Poppy. A lot of junglers have been adopting this on multiple different champions. Um, and I do think this is more of that early game, more of the proactive rune choice over something like an Aftershock, which is more consistency. Uh, and that makes sense alongside their game plan. And I think that when we look at where they're going to look to generate pressure in this game, there is more onus on the solo laners than we would have previously seen. This isn't something like a Zoe that is happy to scale up. It's not a tank top lane. It is double bruiser on the side of Leong and Uniboy. 
So they need to be able to generate some of their own advantages. Whilst Poppy can impact lanes, mid lane certainly not one of the ones that you would expect her to impact all that much early. Especially when it's a Galio, it really does become difficult. And, you know, while you can go to that Thresh lane and try to attack down there, Thresh has fantastic gank assistance. Ezreal is also not really that powerhouse, usually early on, to be able to kind of follow up on those ganks. But big trading happening up here on the top side. I love it already. This is exactly what we wanted to see. Both teams going at it early. It's going to just affect laning phase slightly as EDG is still holding a pretty aggressive position in River. And I don't mind that out of Ray because he's got himself a Doran shield. He burns through one charge of the potion, but he also has the jungle that is going to be naturally pathing towards the top lane at a fairly decent mm -hmm. rate as well. So if they're able to get the Olaf up there, this could set up, you know, one of those early ganks, you know, that training your lading opponent to the heavy trades, then, you know, you can try and capitalize on it. Yeah, certainly so. Especially, you know, if it is later on, he can spellbook over to an Ignite. Uh, giving himself some more kill potential, but Scout just shoving this in, making sure the wave will reset. He is going to have to be somewhat careful. Well, you're certainly not expecting a Poppy to, to visit this lane. If he overextends, there always is the potential of a Predator Poppy getting behind you, you know, knocking you back towards that Aurelia, and, and maybe they can make something happen. Uh, nasty, steadfast presence that Scout will have to deal with. We'll see how he manages once the time comes. The junglers are just getting themselves started on the same side of the map, so we may get a little bit of, uh, as a secondary their side, I should say, they started on that top. So I want to talk about what the mid game should look like for you, uh, Mad Team. We've already said that, you know, they're going to have to generate some leads. They do have an Aurelia as well as an Urgot. As I actually hold that thought, because they might be looking for something in the bottom lane here, Riv. The slow walk up, the flash play. EDG saw it coming. They were just figuring out how to manage it. iBoy is going to get all the damage. He's going to be going down for first blood. One last hit, and Kong Yue, as we expected, on that first blood. Beautiful stuff here from Kong Yue, making it happen in the early game. Level 3, he doesn't even have his Predator boots yet. Gets down to the bottom side of the map Ooh. and gets that first blood onto Ivoy. And that's one of those times that you think, you know what? We saw them leash. They came to lane late. This is guys just going yeah. for a full clear. He's going to try and protect. He's pushing top side of the map. That is not the case. Instead, he passed down bottom, picks up that first blood. And that being said, why take the risk as Ivoy and Mako here? You know that you will outscale. Yeah. You don't need to push the advantage. You can simply farm even. You can play defensive, but that is not the EDG style. They want to dominate. They want to play aggressive, be in their opponent's face. And uh, this time it gets them punished, but Uniboy oh. may have a flash. Flash in taunt. Duran's going to keep Uniboy locked in place, and he gets himself to safety with a flash and flawless duet, but low in the mid lane. And that's a good escape out of Uniboy, but a very questionable flash out of Haro. He was already CC'd up on the spot. Axe should have come out flash over the wall. That probably yeah. should have been a kill as we take another look at that bottom lane play. And just you pointed out, K has been good. Flash, Flay, Ignite gets the damage down, and then Kong Yue, you see he's saving his Flash until after iBoy commits his, knowing he can chase down and get the kill with the red buff. And one of the biggest pieces of advice I give in bottom lane is Ignite early if you think they're going to burn potions, because every single little bit of damage at level 2 is going to help. So make sure that you're cutting through all of that. Don't execute with the smite. Make sure it's running for full duration. Just puts pressure on the lane, and K does a very good job of exerting that, you know, support presence in the lane early. And at least for EDG, you know, the kill did not go over to the mad bottom lane. You know, this is a, a pretty sad buy here for Breeze. Pieces of a tier uh, is certainly not going to give him much laning strength there. So they're not really behind in that regard. And again, it's going to be on the shoulders of Kong Yue, seeing if he can get proactive, seeing if he can get anything done. But here comes Haro. Bot side of the jungle comes back up. Haro knows exactly where Kong Yue will be. And he will get a little bit of love out of the Raptors, still fighting between Rei and Leung in the, in the top side. Starting to go Ray's way just a little bit now. Yeah, it certainly is. These extended tussles, given Doran's shield, is starting mm -hmm. to really keep Ray in this game. It's going to be an early recall coming out of Leung, trying to get back up there. Also want to point out that this isn't the tendency of Breeze. He likes to extended lane, go back and buy Sheen before tier most of the time in the LMS. Likes to be the aggressive Ezreal in these lanes. So the fact that he has been knocked down a little bit, want to see if this changes the play style of the Ezreal into Kaisa lane that he does favor. Yeah, we'll see. It. We'll see how what he's gonna go from here because you know, for iBoy, anytime you're up against a passive Ezreal as a Kaisa, you're gonna be feeling really, really good. Uh, you can do things like you know, skip a storm razor, rush straight to a rage blade, go for the more kind of greedy scaling style of build because you certainly should not be pressured. Not too much CS discrepancy around the map. That first kill being a bit of love from Kong Yue to that bot side, and they'll kind of extend that pressure around now. 
few wards, making sure they have an idea where Haro is as well. And Kung Wei may have found a little bit more than he wants as Scout had advantage in the mid lane, and he is forced back into his own jump. Yeah, and you could see that they were trying to freeze in the bottom lane, so he wanted to have some presence on the bottom side of the map. However, walking through the river like that is a little bit of a mistake. And these are the mistakes that inexperienced lineups do give you. Teams like KT have been so good at punishing them. EDG in this situation not able to do so. It's also one of those things where I feel like it, if you're not used to people punishing you in your region for those types of plays, you are taught that it is a good play, and then you go up against a team like EDG, who is just that little level higher, and all of a sudden, this play that always benefits you in your own region becomes something that can cost you advantages. Certainly agree with the point, and I think that this laning phase so far with the first blood, with the ability to stay even with CS across the board, even in those solo lanes, the fact that they've got their jungler involved in this game does just lend itself to go towards what I was going to say earlier, which is the 1-3-1. They have Aurelia. She can side lane so well. You have Urgot. Should be able to do similarly in this mid to late game. If you separate the globals, if you don't allow Galio to be a part of the initial play, you can stifle some of the aggression that EDG wants to have. Yeah, you definitely can. And well, we did talk a little bit about you know, scaling. Is There's going to be a play on Uniboy. The taunt onto Uniboy. Damage is coming through. They may want to get under the turret on this one. Crowd control's there. Uniboy goes down and <laughs> safety for Scott is he's up, on him. Down and out of that play. Just dunked his body. The man's already dead. <laughs> but that's a really nice play once again because they're just punishing the tendencies of Kongue to look for vision on this river right now as they go in one more time. Over Flash Flay gets the steadfast presence down to keep Scout in position. He doesn't have much mind to get out of this one or fight it, but Ray comes through with the stand united. He's hooked in. Beautiful job being the meatball there, and they're gonna be able to walk out of this one possibly. Spirit's Refuge coming forward, but not enough follow-up damage from Mad just yet on this team. But that was so many summoner spells used. All of a sudden you see both of them on K teleport out of Breeze as well as Leung's time rotating down on what is a neutral way. They invest a lot into that play and don't get anything back. Yeah, they're not able to kind of get that kill. And here it is one more time. As you say, Uniboy trying to come over to support Kong Yue, and they're not able to make the play happen. And now onto Liang. Ooh, Liang not looking like he's in a good spot. He does have flash to get over the wall, though. But there's just too much crowd control. And this river is just becoming a dangerous area. The way our lanes were holding up, but every single time they go for this rotation, this collapse play, just seems that EDG as a team are there first. And this tendency is starting to very much punish the mad lineup. It certainly is. And you know, we talked about the scaling. The one thing you, you kind of do have to mention as, as a caveat to that is the fact that this is mostly a one threat team for EDG. So despite the fact that, yes, there can be a lot of armor stacking on the side of EDG, and that will give them an advantage in the team fight, if Mad could get onto Eyeboy, if you can catch that Kai'Sa and take him out, well, the armor stacking may not matter. Just having that extra damage in the team fight that Mad will uh, could be the difference maker. Yeah, and I think this is another one of those games where I'd like to see Scout with something like, you know, Zonya's Hourglass second item, as opposed to Frozen Heart, full tank yeah. uh, Galio coming out. I think they do need another threat, and he has shown that he can play that role. Might even be, you know, Black Cleaver game here for Haro, right? Yep. You could argue that, but uh, it's always tough to make that decision because Going for things that are very supportive, like the Knight's Vow, can also be very effective and is helping you with that armor stacking. So uh, some tough itemization choices, I think, to be made here for EDG. I got to say, I do really like the fact that Ray is going straight into the Sunfire, though. Not only is this going to help him do in that 1v1, just kind of surviving, which is what he needs to do, uh, it does help with the wave push and it is kind of a so pseudo replacement for the Tiamat. And this is going to make him so much harder to take down on one item in the team fights. Kong Yu and K now going to be roaming buddies. As they're actually just getting a bit of a vision check. Pink Ward control over to EDG here throughout the river. So Mad Team not really leaving anything up to chance. They want to play it safe. But they also want to get an idea of what EDG is trying to do here in the early game. Well, they already know if this goes super late, they're in trouble. You know, giving things over like the fire drakes just accelerate the pace at which that's going to happen. And they do have to be able to pick their windows. Also, Olaf's tendency to just be able to do this so early in the game for not much punish, to be honest, is uh, pretty rough if you're against an Olaf team. And you can see that that is going to be the first fire drake 
of this game picked up for EDG. So even though now they're down about 400 gold, those stats will be relatively even across the board. Yeah, certainly going to be nice to grab there for EDG, but it's always worth mentioning when you do have a more kind of tanky team like this, there is less AP and AD being built up. So for the tanks, it's not going to do nearly as much. That being said, still nice to take away and always a nice to have. They're already swapping into a 1-3-1. You can see that they actually sack bottom lane turret. Three members there. They use the ultimate to trim the wave, but that's going to be Good Liang job. rotating down. Actually, no, it's just a lane swap. I thought that Ezreal Thresh was going to go to mid lane for a moment there. They're going to send <laughs> the Aurelia top, but instead they pull out of that play. It looks like they just want to be able to secure the Rift, Harold. Hey, they are a mad team. Don't put anything past them. Do some crazy stuff. This time they keep it pretty textbook. They're going to get Rift Herald for themselves, though. Try to get a little bit of that tempo game in their favor. Ray's not going to let this happen all easy. And they also have Scout on the other side. Teleport coming up as well from Ray, I believe, or Iboy, I should say, from the bot side of the map. And now they are going to have way more in priority numbers as you have Mako squeezing his way in. And that's a very important contest out of the EDG lineup because Fire Drake for first turret, which this Herald would nearly guarantee if you hold a swap, is going to be a much more impactful trade for a team that we think wants to get online before. They want to be able to open up that map and start trading out some gold objectives. So I like the challenge that came across. Interested to see now whether Mad try and swap back into the Shen lane because it's not a team at, it is just a Sunfire Cape. So opportunity to try and push into Ray and still force the tempo through those turrets. Yeah, there certainly is. And it looks like the Urgot will be matching him in the bot lane for now. So I have to track what they're going to get done there. Interesting though, you know, Breeze is going for the Triforce, so yeah. a bit of a, a higher DPS option as opposed uh, to that Iceborne Gauntlet, uh, which I do think, you know, makes a lot of sense given this composition. Also just much more expensive. Like the area that everyone says Trinity Force does more damage, which is absolutely a true statement. You can make that every single time, but it also costs like 1,400 more gold. <laughs> so you have to be aware of that if you are going to go into the investment. It delays the spikes of the Man Immune so much at this stage. However, it does give you, yeah. you know, that 20% cooldown is still a very nicely rounded build. And, you know, we are going to be kind of thinking about, all right, well, when does Mad then have to make their move, right? And, and I do think if you're going for Triforce and you're looking for that two item power spike uh, with the Muramana, that could be the time where they need to really start looking for fights and trying to force more heavily. Yep. Uh, because the longer you get into this game, the more these item efficiencies are, are going to kind of start coming through. You can see Haro is likely working towards his Ninja Tabbies. Scout already grabbed an early pair of that. You're expecting Ray and, and perhaps even Mako to grab them too. And that is going to become pretty difficult to deal with. Not too many of those core items have been finished up just yet. Rage Blade for I boys. We look across the inventories. You're, you're saying that spike for Triforce is going to be huge for Mad, but they have to make it happen Not sooner than up. later. Scout on the flawless duet knows he can kind of just walk out of this one safely without blowing any summer. Interested that they just didn't ult him there for the slow and then try and flip him back out of turret range. Not all that many tanky stacks built up on Leong right now, so it does make sense in that regard. And. I want a hit of how important this game is for ADG, why they're playing it so slow. We haven't seen any of those really big explosive early game fights that maybe we would have seen beforehand. And they historically have underperformed at Worlds to a very large degree. This is a lineup that, you know, can at times be mocked by the Chinese fans and even people like Clearlove, who have been so successful domestically, not immune to that kind of pressure in these situations. This is a very changed lineup now with Scout and Haro being the leaders of the team, Mako being the primary shot caller. But, I mean, this is so important that they come into Worlds this year and perform to the highest level. And so far, they have not had an early game lead in any of their games. Here, creeping back up to it, they were just under. But that makes it tough to be the EDG that wants to be in your face, wants to be fighting from this LPL region. It really does, and you know, as you said, it's such an important game, you know, not just for the historical implications, but also just for the standings in this group, right? KT is looking so dominant. No one can come into this day expecting to be KT. Yes, EDG could pull off the upset, mm -hmm. but you're expecting a loss there. If you beat Mad and you beat TL, you're out of the group, right? And that is really right. what they need to focus on. They need to focus on getting these wins. They know they have a scaling advantage. Play it safe, play it smart, play for the guaranteed win. And it is important to point out that last year in China, it was a Korea versus Korea final. Hold that thought, they're teleporting in. This is gonna be a contest over Herald. 
Nang from the boss side, Mako now trying to get over onto Breeze. He gets himself to safety with the help of K's Dark Passage, but now they are split in the top side. Kong Yue trying to come in now to help Mad K, but it's gonna be Breeze going down first, and this is gonna feel good for EDG. Kay's getting himself to safety. A few more hooks from the backside could create the That's problem. Gonna be the the Uni in there. The fear is gigantic as he takes down Mako. It's going to be Uni Boy now going to town. On to the rest of the team. I Boy's down as Ray tries to answer back with a kill of his own. He's under the turret now versus Kongwe. And they're going after him with three members of EDG now. Kongwe doing what he can. The presence is steadfast and he will get himself out alive. Yeah, certainly will, but still four kills going over to the Edward Gaming lineup, and Ray at this stage is just too damn tanky. They cannot take him off the rift, and EDG win the fight. Yeah, big fight there for EDG. Liang making a, a heroic effort there, getting the execute on Urgot into a fear. What looked like it would have been four men ended up hitting three, I do believe, on the side of EDG, but these tanky bruisers, the early game, from these tanks where their base damage can carry them through the fights was so big and the fact that Breeze got taken down at the start was such a big deal. Yeah, it certainly was because they're right now hoping that Ezreal's mobility can keep up with some of the damage, but you can see they split. He flashes away from the rest of the team. It does buy some time for people like Kongue to be able to get back into this fight. However, with the AD carry already down, it was going to be tough. Then the execution looked like it was going to be there. Big Beer, it's a huge Aurelia ultimate, had the potential, but I, this iBoy dashing out to the back of the fight bought enough time for Ray to really secure the other portion of the fight. Yeah, it really did. He was getting so much work done on the other side after clearing up Breeze, but certainly, again, credit to Leung, being able to find the flash into Urgot ultimate, threw everyone into that fear, gave them an opportunity to win the fight, but no ED carry, not enough damage, and almost quadrupling the damage of Breeze there, I boy in the fight. Absolutely crazy. They are just splitting up mad in these team fights. Haven't gotten to this Drake first, but it will in. not stop EDG from continuing the fight. You can see Predator on there from Haro. He tries to get himself into a good spot. Going UA's in, he gets Mountain Drake for mad and very nicely done in the face of danger. That's well executed there. They know that Ray doesn't have the taunt, so he can just chuck on the steadfast present, be able to grab the Drake, and they just disengage successfully. However, now priority over the midwave losses. They have to rotate through the jungle. This could be a turret. Both junglers playing a hell of a game right now. Haro for EDG and Kong Ye for Mad Team. Rift Herald towards mid, and Mad Team do have to concede that turret as things start off. Two turrets in favor of EDG. They do grab a 3,000 gold lead now. And so whilst not the most explosive early game, this is exactly what EDG needed. We said they have the scaling on their side. They're going to be able to play their way into this game. What I wanted to mention is the LPL as a region this year can arguably challenge LCK for this year alone. Already Gen.G, former world champions have been eliminated from Worlds. If EDG, IG, and RNG get through groups, they get through groups well and start pushing for quarter semi-finals, then finally people will have to start acknowledging the LPL is one of the most dominant regions, if not the most dominant region in the world. Certainly so. I mean, LPL has been having such an incredible year. Back-to-back -back wins at Rift Rivals. They win at the Asia Games. They win at MSI. But everyone is still saying, well, yeah, what about Worlds, right? And this is the oh, biggest oh, tournament. Stop short. This is the biggest tournament of the year, and rightfully so. People should be looking to that, you know, to judge some of the strength of these regions. So LPL needs to step up and be able to have that incredible performance here. And especially with the strength of the Korean roster in this group. You know, we're sitting here watching MAD, watching EDD, EDG. Neither of these teams playing anywhere near with the finesse of what KT was able to bring to the stage in game number one. They still have a couple more games to play against MAD and EDG. We'll see them again, but so far, KT has looked like the most dominant team, the most controlled team at the world stage. It's kind of, uh, we see from the other teams, as you're saying, KT is playing above the level of the opponents in this group. Everybody else is kind of matching each other in the game, back and forth, and not really excelling. And now I want to see, even though there's a 4,000 gold lead, we've got two items on the Ezreal. We've got one of bit items spiking on the solo laners. Can they split the map up? You can see Aurelia goes top side. Urgot goes bottom lane. They can push out mid lane. They have got first access to the wave. Can they start trying to drag EDG around the map? EDG are good fighters. Can they make good decisions if they get <laughs> tested like this? Yeah, we'll have to find out because 
you know, a lot of that scaling advantage obviously is in the team fight. That being said, I feel like EDG has a lot of the answers you need to be able to collapse on a side lane. You can put someone like iBoy, you know, to, on, on a side lane, kind of hovering behind there to be able to alt in and get a 2v1. You can have Shen stand uniting on the Galio to collapse and have a 2v1 in that way also. So certainly EDG has their opportunities to find those collapses. And, find those odd man fights, even in a side lane. And I would say the only good thing about losing your side lanes this early is that you elongate the waves, and there mm -hmm. is areas for you to look for windows of if you push in, then all of a sudden you can float mid, try and get some pressure, try and look for a kill. You saw that that time with the Aurelia hovering down. Breeze goes for some good chip damage. They don't find it. They go back into the 131. So it's going to be about continually moving around the map continually making EDG guess. If EDG guess right and they get to bring five members to the team fight, it is going to be very scary for Mad Team at this stage of the game. Replaced pick board there. All five, I believe, right now are on the rift for EDG. Look at this. Down the river towards top, they have such good defensive vision and they can just play in front of it and protect it, which means, as you said before, Mad Team's going to have to face check at some point. Yeah, it certainly will have to. They're going to have to keep trying to make the right proactive play. You can see potential claps coming out one more time. We mentioned it could be Zonya's Hourglass second or Black Cleaver second. Well, it also could be both of them, <laughs> as Hook does land here. Caro, not in a good spot, but he may want this fight as Ragnarok goes on. The team decides to step back for a moment. So hook for all, and True Shot Barrage did come out of Breeze. And you can see because they've got more Bruiser-esque builds, they are still relatively squishy in this game. So some good chunk damage goes out onto Haro. They reset the fight. They can't match the one for one in the side lane still. So Scout as well as Ray are still pushing up on their side of the map, but they are doing a good job of securing farm onto their carries and not giving anything else away. We'll have to see though when Mad wants to try to you know, choose a fight to try to look for something because it does feel with Kaisa now on two items, Ray is sitting on two items, Zonia is coming through soon here for Scout. It's yep. getting harder and harder and harder uh, to see the team fight wins ever happen. And where do you look for that team fight entry at all because you're going to have scout coming in a stand united to go against can you even get a pick yeah i think the big thing here is if you get control of either top or bottom side vision and the sidelines are pushing that up that far maybe all of a sudden you do look for the play where you just bring fresh and ezreal and you 3v1 a sideline danger is if it isn't top then you're going to open up baron kaisen one of the best baron takers of the game at this stage so they do have to once again be very careful of their windows they probably don't want to fight in the jungle however this is an area where EDG can impact heavily. Yeah, definitely the case. And I mean, I think you always have a couple options. You could try to hard commit to a split push, try to force for those turrets. But if you're not going to play super aggressive in a side lane and not try to commit to that style a la G2, then you really do need to try to make it about objective. EDG so aggressive. Baron's up on the top side of the map, and they're saying, we'll fight you full on in your bottom side jungle as they just continuously look for it on Mad. Mad's answering back with a little bit of damage for themselves, but you see how much EG can take in absorbing this fight and almost a potential turn. Kong Yu is gonna keep going in. They're not gonna stop! They're going right for the fight. Unstoppable for Haro as he throws a on Fear Beyond Death, gets it, and the Fear comes through as well. Ray's in with the rest of the team here. Iboy not looking good. There's the disarm on the side of Haro. He's still out of the fight as he tries to get himself back in. Ray has been huge. Coming in late when the health bars are low to finish off a few of the kills. The hook now on to Scout as Liang is in the middle. Scout wants over the wall in a 3v1 as he tries to get the Justice Punch in. Liang's trying to handle his own in his own 3v1. And they do take down Scout. Chaos favors the Mad Team. And once again, it is the AD carry of Mad Team, just so damn slippery on this 40% cooldown Ezreal. Multiple members of EDG throwing themselves at him. It is an even trade. Only one member going down, but Breeze just showing how proficient he is at this pick. What a ridiculously close fight. It looked like it would be so ADG favored, but then Mad able to slip away with there such little again. health bars. And this was a great start to the fight for Mad. Getting in on top of them, knocks up three members. The Shen ultimate is used on iBoy. So already, Mako and the Olaf are essentially out of the fight, and then a beautiful Urgot ultimate pulling him back in gets that fear on two. But you can see with Red Buff, with the slipperiness of the 40% cooldown Ezreal, he's able to continually dance in and out of this play. Unifoy also drags Ray into the back end of the team fight. 
And Eyeboy, because lack of life, still can't find his way back in, and they're just so slippery. Yeah, they're so slippery. Wow. The pre-shift on that taunt, and then look at Eyeboy here against Liang. He has the, the proc that comes back up to heal him one more time with the flea footwork so ridiculously close, and then again, Breeze just Ooh. missing. I mean, this was a fight that was decided by the smallest of differences. Absolutely. Look at the oh damage. Look what happened, actually, now that Breeze was alive in a fight, how much longer that went, and they weren't separated to start. And when you talk about DPS, there is the yes, hit the target damage over and over again, perfect rotation, how much damage do I do? But what people forget is in boss fights, there's such a thing as uptime. <laughs> like, how much are you moving around in this fight? How much do you just get to stand still and go nuts? And unfortunately for iBoy, there wasn't enough time for him to just sit there and unload the barrage that is Kaiser. He had to dance in and out. He had to just hit the bruises, whereas Breeze, with the Mystic shot at this point, is just unrivaled. If iBoy gets one more item, especially if it is going to be a Banshee's Veil, he's just going to dive in and blow everyone up. But if this game has another fight like that right now, could be mad team favored. It's and certainly I possible. I mean, it, but as AP Kaisa, when you have the Banshee sh shield, you have uh, the ultimate shield, the shield from Shen ultimate yep. as well. Like, it all starts stacking up. There is a point in this game where iBoy can tank the lineup. <laughs> but he will just dive in with everything given to him. You know, he's going to have the Galio damage reduction. He's going to have a Shen, and he is just going to go nuts. I wonder if you do just go Zonia's third this game, though. I think, you know, the efficiency of that item against this mad lineup makes a lot of sense, yeah. despite the fact that Banshee's Veil is so effective. Also, the extra armor is really going to pay dividends here. It's, it's crazy. We talk about it. He's 0, 2, and 5, yet definitely the transformation to I-Man can still happen in this <laughs> game. There is the level up possibility. Hey, I'm still waiting for Uni-Man as well. That's true. That's Certainly true. has been unlucky in some of these fights. Hook is on. Ooh. I don't know if that's the one they want right away. Here comes Scout. This is what we talked about. The crowd control EDG can provide after the fight. Liang's in the middle. Can he get the ultimate fear beyond death down? And the fear, no. Uni Boy now falls as he's taken down to Uni Kid. And it's going to be Liang getting the hook on there. Or getting out, sorry, as he gets taken down by Ray. Ray is picking up so many kills on the Shen. A threat to be reckoned. And now Breeze taking quite a bit of damage as the box comes up to stop the fight. But oh, it's not God. over. High boys able to secure that kill on Decay. The passive execute damage there from Kaisa just shredding through K on the Thresh. And this is going to be the straw that broke the camels back here. Absolutely. EDG take the team fight. They take the Baron. And this game is looking all but wrapped up. And we said it was going to come down to the mid game, that they had the 25 to 30 minute fight. They think that they've found another one, but Bree's not yet there. It is a hard initiation, but they forget about the global ultimates, the ability to join. Galio comes in, Shen ultimate will also deliver Ray. And unfortunately, just not enough coordination on the Mad Team lineup to make this fight work. Yeah, Leon not able to quite find the big ultimate in this fight. That had been so key for them in yeah. the last couple team fights. Getting that fear beyond death, getting the follow up fear. And then just look at this execute damage from iBoy. That passive with the fifth hit gives so much burst there. Last auto, boom, with the Q as well. And unfortunately, I think it is fair to say that iBoy has now, oh, actually, maybe not, the flash push. iBoy able to get himself to safety a bit. Yang's going in, looking for Fear Beyond Death. Ultimate's down as the prongs already went out and did not find their target as they push back. Scout still didn't decide to join that fight, just has Baron Buff pushing the side lane. And you can see right now that iBoy is just having a bit of a field day with the ultimate. He has gone on his hourglass, has summoner spells yep. available, playing on the front line very confidently, doesn't feel like they have the burst to take him out. And it is now a 7,000 gold. That is three items. He has now been accelerated far enough into the late game that Kaisa are probably going to be the queen. Yeah, it's really hard to see a fight in which they kill Ray. also. The fact that he got out to such a good start, he got an early Titanic. Crazy. He's now on Titanic, plus the Warmog Sunfire tabbies. He has a stopwatch to boot. And not only is he so tanky, but he is actually putting solo kill threat onto yeah. these backline members with a level 17 Shen and that Titanic. And that's one of the things about Shen is he gets so much tankiness from his kit as well. Has a repetitive shield, has a, a Spirit's Refuge to block out auto attacks. So many of these champions rely on that to be able to pump out damage. Ray can solo dive the back line and be relatively safe until someone like Mako, someone like iBoy can go back there with him, help separate the team and win the team fight. Causing so much disruption. Somewhere that Mad Team has been able to thrive, but it's a little too strong from EDG now. 
And Mad Team cannot call the bluff. 11 to 5, 30 minutes in, and second tier turret quite uncontested here as EDG is able to be in and out with Scout's pressure still on top and Ray in the bot side. And it's not just the gold lead, it's also the experience. You can see two levels in each of the soul lanes. iBoy almost a full level ahead, closing in here on Ray. 16. So, yeah, three levels now for Ray there as he just dinged up to 18. Oh. A 2v1, will he be able to get out? Is level 18 enough for this fight? Steadfast Presence is on, smushed up against the walls. Ray throws on the Zanyas, flash to get over. Ooh, no, Fear Beyond Death is gonna chomp him right up. Scout puts himself in a real sore spot, though. The team's gonna have a lot of fun on the top side of the map as EDG starts to push down the inhibitor turrets, and Scout says, walk this way! And Liang and Kung Yu start to follow him down bot lane. You can see that they had to try and force on the other side of the map as well, because otherwise, EDG were just gonna continue to walk the Baron up creeps. Hook's gonna miss there. It's a strange join of that fight from Scout. He teleported, flashed, and used the ultimate to try and save <laughs> his top laner. Potentially wanted him to get the MasterCard player of the game and thought the one kill might hurt him, but Ooh. otherwise uh, has got been a fairly good performance. Got himself and I'm helping. Yeah, yeah, got himself and I'm helping. <laughs> For the other team, unfortunately. But, <laughs> you know, Ray, I think he may have thought his stopwatch timing was going to make the Urgot ultimate time out. Yep. And if the Urgot ultimate time's out there, then I think that looks like a great join uh, from Scout because, you know, they probably don't have enough damage to actually finish him off with the Galio all coming yeah. through with that you know, passive shield from Shen. Instead, though, the timing was not quite there. They get the execute, and it's a nice play from Mad that is going to buy them a little bit of time, at least in this game. Got to wait four seconds for Fear Beyond Death, and it can still tick off the hit below that crucial execution mark. Ming now in the front with Kong Ye, and it looks like they'll get good control of the vision. Oh, the first on. time, they're really getting vision, but they've been fighting without it before, so it doesn't stop them this time. Great disarm across the team with EDG as they try to get out and answer back into the fight. Mako very low, but he stays alive. The arcane shift forward. There's the auto attack from Breeze to get a cool hit across the side of EDG. They've now traded one for one, and in a bad spot is Liang, the guy they need to be alive. Slowly, they both back away, and it's going to be a two for one in favor of EDG. It's hard to think of a better start to the fight than that for Mad Team. They get the hook onto iBoy K trying to turn this game around, trying to will themselves into a team fight victory. But even with iBoy getting caught, it's not enough to break through the Shen. Stan United, Oof. the Kai's ultimate shield, and calling you away back to the base to try to defend. I love the pressure Kong is putting on here. He's just going in, not caring about the the result. And we can see the happen right there. Double, double kill coming in for iBoy. It's just too much now for Mad Team. They flipped their own switch and they said, we're always going in. If you can be behind me, let's go. And EDG is more than happy to oh apply. There's another one for iBoy on the board. Yeah, iBoy just so confident in his Kai'Sa play. Goes invisible, pumps out all of that damage. And you can see that the clock has started to run out time and time again. Mad are looking for their proactive play, but EDG on the counter attack with the counter punch, something I'm not all that familiar <laughs> of watching, is performing very well. They really are, and if you give them the free time, double infernal eye boy in the late game. TP's coming in, Scout, they're looking to defend him. Ray's there to help. <laughs> in and out as Ray actually goes back to try to get the knock up on the Yang. And Uni Boy, it took a little too long there for what they wanted to happen. But Ray may be able to take quite a bit of this damage 2v1 and brings Uni Boy and Liang down to the same HP. And Ray blocked the Urga ultimate there, keeping Scout alive. Yeah. That was the key difference in that fight. Really nice play from Ray. He has been so on point this game. Yeah, it certainly was a nice Look assist. And we see the last fight. Very nice hook into the immediate Urgot ultimate. So they know if he gets him below 20%, he will die. But Shen ultimate comes across. Then all of a sudden, you have all of the peel coming out of Mako. He's back underneath the turret. And it's just too hard to get onto him. You can see Breeze and Konya trying to play the back end of this fight as well as they can. Leung tries to go back in. Do what he. Yeah. I mean, it's just so hard to get onto the back line at this stage. It really is. But if you can't get iBoy, you cannot win the fight really as mad. We see how quickly he shreds through these guys. He is now sitting at 40% CDR with a death cap. This is full on Kai'Sa late game. So he's going to be an absolute monster. And, you know, when you have that death cap for the multiplier and the double infernal, it just gets even crazier. I mean, he is sitting at 762 AP right now. That is absurd. He's going to hurt in the team fights, I think <laughs> it's very fair to say. 
and they probably have one more shot here. They're 12,000 gold down. EDG is a team that probably will give them the Baron fight if Mad want to step up to the plate. I'm looking forward to seeing how the one last brawl goes. Back in the fourth, tempting summoners, tempting ultimates. A lot of summoners are already down coming into this fight, so it's up to the abilities they have across that skill set to make it happen. Iboy staying in the back for safety as Liang continues to and try to be that front line. Yeah, and for EDG, it's just a waiting game. You have the supers coming down the mid lane. They're yep. gonna send Breeze back to clear. He does have the TP, but EDG can now try to force something, force an engage, or start up that Baron to get a TP. Teleport is there from Breeze. Oh! Stand United to come what is in. That damage? They have to rethink the fight. Killer Instinct immediately. Steadfast presence on just a little bit too late. And I, boy, Ray coming in from the top side of the fight. Liang Zanya's in, but he's gonna go down real quick as Kong Ye flashes over the wall. They need safety in their base right now because EDG is gonna be looking for the Nexus. Yeah, there's not much to say at this point. I mean, somebody's oh, gonna man. patch that thing. Half his health in a W. <laughs> Breeze right. not feeling good, but he still wants to fire back his own damage. It's got to feel bad not seeing the same result come into those Q Mystic shots. The Nexus turrets now taking damage from EDG. Nobody can stop these guys this game. 18 to 7 as they keep stacking up the kills. Eye boy, 8, 2, and 9. Another one coming through possibly as the resurrection coming in now for Uniboy. And he's gonna go down. That's a kill coming in for Haru. EDG is having a little bit of fun with their food. Going for seconds, going for thirds. Dessert's not even on the table yet as they have their hand in every bit of the pie that Mad is putting on the table. You can see Breeze and K still want to be able to chase him out of the base. <laughs> really? Here's the DP. They can actually get some kills here. EDG Leung's gonna come in. Possibly making a sore mistake. The game ender have right in their hands. Taunting Matt out of their base again. EDG doing a bit of ring around the rosy and easily could have taken the game there, but it'll go for a second run in just a few minutes. Yeah, damage calculation just off. So now with the base broken, EDG one more time can just look towards Baron. I think they might. No, they're not going to go for a recall. Don't know what I'm talking about. Instead, they're just going to look to take down the big objective. They'll get a recall in after that and then just look to push into the base. They're just doing it for sure. You gotta make it for sure that you're gonna get it. And I think that the biggest thing in the first two games that we've seen today is that it has just been a coordination difference on the map. This hasn't been individual players popping off, although in this game, you know, Ray, iBoy yeah. have certainly yeah. had some individual moments. It just has been the team coordination of EDG, knowing their play, knowing when they can look for it, and then being able to out-execute the Mad lineup. And certainly doing a really good job playing to their win conditions this game, not really giving Mad a lot of opportunities to find those fights in the early stages when they had their best chance. And, you know, EDG, I think, played a very calm and collected game for about 30 minutes, and I think they've been having a bit of fun with it for the last 10 here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, Ray is one of those players that when he came back to EDG after his stint on Cloud9, everyone was hoping that the top carry was going to be alive, that this was going to be another Koro situation where they could play things like the Nar. Hasn't worked out. If he can add these flexible tanks that also can be threats into his lineup, like the Shen, oh. like the Jarvan, then I think that this could be a very promising sign for EDG as the tournament progresses. They say that combination of Ray Impact with Spear Shield, I think Ray took both with him and he has a Spear and Shield in that top lane. As you're saying, able to deliver the defense and offense and around the board, the picks feel good for EDG. They took Haro's Olaf last, 4-0-9. He comes in for clear love this game and everybody around the board for EDG is able to put up a very Good showing. Inside the base once again on all three inhibitors, and they're going to take him down around the horn. His mad team forced to watch. And yeah, EDG, that, this is tutorial style, <laughs> clearing out everything, every inhibitor. See whether we get a final fight or if they just walk creeps at the Nexus. Panned out for the entirety. The big picture here of how much damage EDG is able to do all at the same time. And there's just too much for Mad Team to think about in this. The chaos is not the part they're thriving in. Killer Instinct goes in. That's going to be the activations for Scout. Heroic entrance, and it is a hero for everybody on the side of EDG. They get a double kill for iBoy. There's a triple coming in as the Nexus is now the focus. And EDG take down Mad Team. <laughs> iBoy diving in with 2,000 in shielding there. Straight onto the back line, styling on Mad to finish this one out. It never really was in doubt. Kongyue able to make some early plays that were very nice. 
the young and the team fights, finding yeah. some good fights on the Urgot, but EDG, full control, start to finish, never really in doubt this one. Didn't lose a turret. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. When you look at what percentage of the game was just played on mad side of the map, the fact that EDG just continually pushed them back, continually corralled yeah. them in. They took a lot of the early game pressure. Ray had a standout performance. iBoy looked once again like a superstar carry, but I think more importantly, no one showing that they're a liability. Everyone stepping up to the plate. And EDG showing that they're once again potentially a legitimate contender. Because there's always that caveat of the game that we saw against KT where they just weren't able to go with them in the early game. I think the uh, the point that nobody's a liability is actually really big here. Because if you look at kind of statistically where EDG got their damage out coming through, 60% of it comes from Scout and iBoy. So for, for Scout to be on a tank and still get that play out of the rest of the team looks so good for EDG. Yeah, it certainly is. And look at where EDG has sat historically, where people like Mouse and Clear Love were underperforming on the international stage. Scout very much an inconsistent mm -hmm. carry in the past, but this time around, this Worlds, it is looking much more promising. It really is, and you have to give a lot of credit, though, I think, to Ray, and he is going to be our master card player of the game. Had such a big impact in the early stages for early kills, springboarding him towards that early Titanic Hydra, and Ooh. this guy was really getting it all done. Yeah, I'm sure he'll, he'll love the nickname of Big Impact in this game as well. Picked up one of his <laughs> old teammates, former champions that Impact had shown so much success on, was able to carry out in the team fights. As you mentioned, such a solid laning phase, and if he can add another threat to this lineup, if he can continue to play consistently on both tank and damage dealer, it adds another weapon to the EDG arsenal. A shining light for the team. We now have Mad versus TL coming up. Going to be a good game as well. Hopefully pretty scrappy on the riff. We're stepping away when we return. As I said, Mad versus Team Liquid. Don't miss it. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that browser.